Hello again. Let's talk definition. What are tessellations? Wikipedia says a tiling or tessellation of a flat surface is the covering of a plane using one or more geometric shapes called tiles with no overlaps and no gaps. The word plane in this case is not the kind that flies. Here it means a surface. I would simply add that the ultimate repetition of the pattern occurs in two directions, up, down, left, right, or it can be skewed a bit on an angle. Think of a stamp. You make copies horizontally and vertically. As long as the gaps aren't too wide, it's a tessellation. Floor tiles are the most common tessellations we see all the time, or patio bricks. Some call tessellations nested shapes. I like that. Escher called this drawing style regular division of the plane. Symmetry is more than just mirrors. Tessellations follow any of these four rules of symmetry. Reflection, rotation, translation, glide reflection. There are 17 ways to divide a plane or surface following these four rules in different combinations. The same rules followed by crystals in nature. No gaps, no overlaps. Just to repeat, the four symmetry operations, reflection or mirror, like so, rotation, the easiest one to show you here is 180 degrees. If your thumb is the rotation point, like so. Translation, which is just another word for repetition. Repeated over and over, down, up, left, right. And glide reflection, which is a natural combination of a mirror and a translation together. It seems it's quite common in crystals, too. This is how it works. Mirror and a glide. We'll cover these symmetry operations and their combinations for each symmetry group in future classes. For now, we will zero in on only one way to divide the plane. Symmetry group P4G. I'm not a mathematician, so this is about as technical as we'll get. I'm an artist and think as an artist, so no worries, we won't get into complex vocabulary. I might show you in a future class how people have classified all 17 symmetry groups. It's up to you if you want to use any of these classification systems. I've learned one system and created my own. Escher had his own codes too. But I usually look in my notes to find what I call my magic sentence. The one that tells me how to reach an outline tile in just a few strokes of my stylus. A tessellation is different than a pattern. There's no space between the elements. These first four images are tessellations, mind you, very simple ones. Using the most basic shapes, you can tile a surface or plane, as they say, in only a few ways. With pure simple shapes, we all know well, a triangle, a rectangle, and a hexagon. The rectangle is special as it can be skewed, as illustrated in the fourth image. A circle? Nope. It does not tessellate. The octagon? Neither. These last two examples have spaces left over in between. Then we can get into slightly more complex shapes, some found in Islamic geometric designs. Simple tessellations with not too many lines. Rotated I-beams fill the plane. Crosses tile well. Squares with a split shift as well. This fluid triangle tessellates. It is found in the Alhambra in a palace in Spain. A four-corner twist works well. This one is common in Zentangle patterns. 
or the classic Louis cube from rotated lozenges. These geometric tiles have no recognizable human or animal shapes. And that is the difference between tile, patterns, and tessellations. Tessellations have recognizable shapes, mostly animal or human shapes, and sometimes objects too. What matters most to the tessellation artist is the perimeter of the shape, the perfect repeating outline that will accommodate a design. We can see fish in the tessellation outline on the left. As for the right side, with a bit of imagination, we can see a dog with a huge poofy tail or maybe a squirrel. The outline of the tile is most important, but also what you make of it on the inside. Imagination is important for both the outline and the details inside. Then we progress into really complex fluid shape tessellations. The type of nested shape we are here to learn in this class and future classes. The more you practice, the more your intuition will kick in and give you a hand at seeing those wonderful creatures hiding in your outlines. That frog tessellation in the middle of the top row was my first drawn by hand. We will practice it in the fourth video in this class. In the next video, I want to show you M.C. Escher's work. He was the master tessellation artist that jump-started this whole nested shape movement. Till then.